Hello, welcome to the Dre and Smiley, the Inner Circle Podcast. All right. So, Smiley, we got a great guest on with us today. Uh, I'll share one of the key reasons why I'm so interested in speaking to this guest after I read this bio real quick here. So, Jerome Lawrence, born in Trinidad and Tobago, discovered his love for aviation amidst a modest upbringing. Influenced by his father's work at the airport, his fascination with flight grew as he watched planes in the Caribbean skies. Jerome's journey took him to Bishop's High School, where he, his passions for music and aviation flourished. He achieved a private license certificate and pursued a degree in aviation, aviation maintenance actually, in the United States. So once he completed his, his degree in aviation maintenance science, he went on to become an advocate for Caribbean students. Jerome served as president of the Caribbean Student Association and vice president of the Florida Caribbean Students Association. He mentored foreign students and conducted groundbreaking research on global carbon emissions impact on the atmosphere, presented at the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals Conference. As a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Jerome holds multiple flight certificates and technicians' credentials. His aviation career soared from a, from a first officer to captain at a regional airline, and he's now an instructor pilot on the Boeing 737 for a major U.S. airline. That's the big boy, the 737. <laughs> In 2018, Jerome's dedication led to the creation of We Were Once Them, a nonprofit organization after he and fellow United Pilots inspired over 2,000 school children through the Aerospace Professionals School Program in Trinidad and Tobago. As the regional director, Jerome remains committed to uplifting and guiding the next generation. With that, Jerome, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank, thank you very much, Jonathan, for having me this morning. For sure, for sure. So as I was saying, Smiley, one of the things that is really, um, I'm really excited about, Jerome, is my father-in-law was a pilot. And so my, my wife grew up having a dad as a pilot. And it's one of those things where, you know, you kind of take things for granted if you have it around you all the time, right? And so he would tell me stories about sometimes they get on a plane and fly to another state for lunch. Sometimes they get on a plane and, you know, fly wherever, you know, for a couple of days and fly back. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you guys did you flew on a, for lunch, you know, and, and, and he was a modest guy, you know, very, you know, very approachable, super, you know, this is an amazing man. Um, and him being a pilot was just like mind blowing to me because I had never really met a pilot that I knew. And when I was talking to my wife about him being a pilot, she's like, yeah, yeah. You know, no big deal. You know, because she grew up around. <laughs> she grew up around. So, 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 tell me, Jerome. For you, tell me how this came about, and I want to dive into more. You know, what makes Jerome? Which, what makes you you? Tell me how this came about. You deciding, I want to pursue uh, becoming a pilot. Ultimately, flying a seven thirty seven. Uh, yeah. Well, well, again, firstly, thank thank you sincerely for having me on this beautiful sun Sunday morning, uh, Saturday morning, uh, actually. Um, so it started. I did, no one in my family flies. I have a distant cousin that um, is in aviation, but my mom said from the time I could talk, it's all that's all I wanted to do was was fly. So they just kind of pushed me in that direction. I had very supportive parents and uh, very supportive fam family. So it was actually my mom that uh, forced me to go go to college because you can go just be a pilot. You don't have to go get a degree. You don't have to do anything else. They teach you everything you need to know in pilot school. But my mom was the adamant one. It was like, hey, man, I was spending all this money for you just to go get licenses. And then if something happens, you have nothing to fall, fall on. So she kind of pushed me in the direction to go to college. My dad supported me. Um, and then uh, that that's kind of how it all grew. Everyone just kind of, it, it took a village. Because uh, as I said, I came from hum, humble beginnings. You know, um, mm. we in order to get like hot water, we had to like, you know, fill up the bucket and, you know, go get a kettle and put the hot water in okay. outside. That type of stuff. Okay. Um, but in terms of the aviation growth, it was, I would say my parents, but my mom was the one that kind of like pushed me in the direction to be more than 
just a just a, a pilot. So went to college in in the states. First one of of the fam family to make make it to college in the states. That's a culture shock. All right. Uh, there sure, is there is uh, you know there there is an adjustment coming from the Caribbean where you see a lot of you coming to the states at that school. Uh, you don't see a lot of you. So that was definitely a, a, a men mental adjustment, and then having to go through the little trials and tribulations, as as you only want to call it, to get to this level. Um, it does take a lot of work. It does take some perseverance, some persistence, and dedication. But it's doable. It's just a very. It's not the easiest journey. Journey. I would sure. Say. So so speaking of that, the uh, the journey itself, when you reflect back on it. What was the most, what was the biggest obstacle that you faced and how did you overcome it? I would say uh, finances. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I think there's not enough education uh, in terms of how expensive college can be for someone that's not born in the United States. Mm. Um, there is not enough understanding as to how college works um, uh, for families that have not gone to college. Um, so there was a lot of missing in information, key pieces that my mm -hmm. parents and mm -hmm. myself, we didn't know because we just didn't know. No one, there, was, there wasn't like a, you know, a program, hey, read this pamphlet for going to college in the United States. And as well too, there is that adjustment of living in the United States as a minority. So the, mm -hmm. I think the financial aspect of financial ed education um, probably was one of the biggest uh, obstacles that we had to overcome because we just didn't know. Mm. And uh, in terms of overcoming it, well, uh, dad, he he put his foot foot to the ground, you know, and uh, he did what he had, had to do to this day. I never asked. Um, and then I also chipped in while I was in college. I worked a job. Uh, I got loans. I took student, student loans. Um, you know, and I just had to live a very uh, efficient life. Hey, we, we we've all been to college. Yeah, we, know, yeah. we know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I have a buddy of mine. Speaking of which, uh, we were in college, and he was like, "Dre, dude, I I found I found the hack. I found the the you know what'll help us get by in terms of saving money." So he what he would do is. He'd buy boxes and boxes and boxes of macaroni and cheese because it was like, I don't know, 99 cents or something. Yeah, yeah. He would eat that and he'd go to Wendy's and get a baked potato, right? Yes, that, sir. that was probably 99 cents, right? Yes, sir. So that's what we had. He'd have for like lunch and dinner mac and cheese yes, and sir. baked potatoes. Yes, and sir. I, I told him, I said, dude, if you keep eating that, you, <laughs> you go, you go, yeah. You gonna be up in the bathroom, we read War and Peace for like six months. <laughs> you gonna be up, uh, you gonna be up in there like, what's going on? <laughs> Why am I here so long? So, but yeah, I get it. You, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, man. So, Jerome, you mentioned one of the other challenges was making that transition from Trinidad and Tobago to the U.S. as a minority. Mm -hmm. So, talk about what it's like living um, as a person from. Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. What is like living there? And then when you made that transition, what was it like living here initially? So living What's the in difference the, between the two? In the, I think the island life uh, is a lot simpler. I mean, it's the same pro problems in the States. Well, not, not the same problems, but it's the same life uh, just on a smaller scale. Uh, things okay. are just been a little bit easier in, in the islands where the mentality is well. It's a village, you know, it's a, it's a village. When people say village, people misunderstand. You think it's like dirt roads and, and all that stuff. But when, when I say community, that's that's the word. So mm -hmm. even if you are struggling, I can go by Smiley and be like, hey, hey, man, you know, you got some potatoes, you got some meat or what it is, and Smiley's going to give give that to me. And then if, if you're my cousin, Dre, just go by my cousin's house and, 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 and eat. So it's even if you might be down on your luck for this month, there's family. And there's friends that would support you throughout because that's just how we were raised. Now, times are change, changing and, and, and the mentalities of folks are changing. But how I was raised, that's how it was. Now, coming to the States, you're by yourself. You know, in the States, it doesn't have that sense of community in at least the area that I was in for college. 
wasn't that sense of community. And that's why when I found the Caribbean Students Association and my, my college room, roommates, uh, they were from Af- Africa as well. They were from Africa. So they had that sense of community. So mm. we helped one another out. So that's how we were able to kind of survive because in that college, it's predominantly, uh, predominantly white, right? So uh, the minorities sort of stuck together uh, to help one another because we understood what it meant. Um, so mm-hmm. the transition was not the first year, man. I I, I struggled, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. It, it it wasn't. It I didn't understand why things were the way that they were. It wasn't. It mm-hmm. wasn't one 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 plus one. I no one briefed me on that sort of stuff. I mean, your parents would tell would tell you things, but you know, as a young man, you're smelling yourself. Your testosterone is kind of up. You don't understand these things till you experience it, and then I'm like, wait, where is it? Why, why is it like this? Why, why is it not as black and white, you know, as clear as, but it's a lot of sub- subliminal stuff that you yeah. might not pick up on because you're not, you're not in tune to it. But until mm-hmm. you see it, you're like, hold on a sec. They've been doing this to me for, for how long? <laughs> and I've, been, I've been accepting this, you know? So it's, it's a, I, I, I would say that slope of transition, man, if, if you're not in tune to it or know about it, it's dramatic. Hmm. You know, I um, when you're talking about being the first generation college, I was the same way. And the thing when you're talking about eating, Dre, is when I went to college, the first two days, I didn't eat. I didn't know you were supposed to use your ID to to buy to, to get your meals. See? So I, I went up there and I ran out of money because I had to ride the bus from Pittsburgh to New Hampshire. By the time Jeez. I got there, I had like two dollars. There was no uh, convenience store or neighborhood store. So I talked to my mom. I was like, she's like, what's wrong? I was like, I'm hungry. I can't eat. She's like, why? I was like, I only got $2 left. And she's like, go to the cafeteria. I was like, I have no money. So I didn't know to go in there with mm-hmm. no money. And then uh, she talked to somebody. She's like, hold on, let me call you back. We used to go Western Union with some money so I could eat. And then she talked to one of her girlfriends who'd been to college. She's like, no, he uses his ID. I was like, my yeah. ID? What do you yeah. mean? And then I was eating. Yeah, yeah, man. I was doing this. Man, boy, that meal plan, that meal plan saved, saved your life. Yeah. Exactly, the meal plan, man. <laughs> boy, and then, yeah. then I realized, I was like, if I got a job working at the cafeteria, then I can hoard my meal plan points. And I can always, I mean, with a steak, with some potatoes for you, two for me. Man, I hold I hold door with a store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, yeah, I, it's funny that you say that as well. Because the people that worked there were people like us, right? So they yep. would themselves when they were closed, they would call us, be like, "Yo, boys, grab a box," you know. Yep. And that's yeah. the community that I'm talking about. That village stuff yeah. because they helped us. Because I, I swear, some of them folks, I, I, I saw maybe one of them maybe two years ago after like a six year hiatus. You know, I still thank them to this day because there were times when they just knew, man. They they know yeah. they know what's happening, you know. So when it's done, even when we buy food or boxes, we're heavier than everybody else. <laughs> right? But that was yeah. their way of commu- contributing to our success because our success yeah. helps them because well, they're like, well, we can do it. Well, we can damn right. sure help you get up yeah. there and you help somebody else. So that's kind of right, what right, mentality right. was. You, I help you, you help somebody else. Uh, I like that, pay yeah. it for it. So tell me this. So with the pilot thing, I, you know, it's, it's, I travel a lot uh, when, when I travel. I'm on a plane I'm, every week. I'm flying tomorrow. But I don't know what it is. Every time I see either, I'm starting to see sisters flying as pilots. Yes, so, sir. And I see, I, I back about seven to twelve years ago, I would see a brother get excited. Now I see them more frequently. Now I see sisters, and I just get like a sense of pride when I see when they open up the door, and I'm like, all right, it's one of us in there, yeah. and there's sisters in there. So when you're traveling, especially on the big body seven thirty seven or even the little plane, where where have you gone that you was on your bucket list? Like you know, I'm going to fly this plane. I'm going to. Senegal, I'm going to Zimbabwe, or where was that destination where you got off the plane? Like, I can't believe I brought everybody here, or I just can't believe that I flew here. Was it New York City? Was it Africa? I, was it somewhere? I think uh, I don't. I, my bucket list flight is to fly my parents to Trinidad, and I haven't done that yet. Uh, but uh, the one that stands out was when I first flew my mom. That was from uh, DC to New York. 
that was probably like top top flight that right. I've done. Um, that was one of the cool coolest things ever. She was on on the plane, and you know, mom is kind of hum humble or what mm-hmm. it is. But I, we locked eyes, and I could see that there's a sense of relief or a sense of pride. Oh man, that is actually my son. Um, that uh, is like flying flying that plane. So um, I I think that was one of the coolest. Uh, not so the des- the destination, but in terms of the mm-hmm. operation. Um, uh-huh. Did you make an announcement? My... Yeah, yeah. So the captain that I was flying with was amazing. Uh, he, she, she was really, really cool. She allowed me to like, you know, uh, make the announcement to, to like my to like my mom say I was like hi hi mom, you know, and um, <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. and then the <laughs> oh pilot, man, dude, my attendants took took care care of her and all all, all that stuff. Yeah, so that was genuinely one of the top top things. And I guess maybe destination wise would have been Aruba. Um, Aruba okay. has that little beach, you know, where pe- pe- people mm-hmm. like, you know, hang onto the fence and all, all that stuff. So mm-hmm. actually flying in there and seeing and someone took a video of, of the flight. I'm like, ah, oh, that's actually, that was me, you know? So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. So that, that was probably like the top two, but the ultimate one would, for me would be to fly my parents to Trinidad and land the plane, uh, in Trinidad. Oh, that's cool. So let's, can you talk about like when I look in there and, um, and you look in the cockpit, so is it the first officer and the captain? Who's mm-hmm. really flying the plane? Are you tag teaming? Or can you talk about the business of actually what happens when you fly a plane? Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's one, it's one it's a crew and environment. So we're both doing a job to ensure the plane uh, uh, lands safe, safely. But at, in the moment, it's only one person that flies. So it's called a pilot flying and a pilot mom. So whether it's the captain that's flying or the first officer that's flying, one person is always flying the plane and the other one is like monitoring things. So ensuring that we're on the right path or we're, we're responding to air traffic control or that sort of stuff. But only one person takes off and lands, um, physically t- takes off and lands. But while we're up there, both of us are working together to ensure things are kind of done according. Same like you and, uh, uh, you and, you and Smiley, you know, things are, you guys both have individual jobs, but come, come together to get this, get this, uh, mm-hmm. pod, this podcast up. So. so do you, do you say like, when, let's say, cause it seems like when I fly Southwest or United, the crews meet each other. It's a plane's there, different people are arriving to take off. Do you arrive and you say, okay, Dre, I'm land, then you take off or do you take turns or is it just a, it's automatically implied that if I'm number one captain and you're first officer, you take off I land or, or it's negotiated per flight. No. So it's uh, it's like, so let's say we do three, three flights a day. And that is a lot mm-hmm. for, for the big, for the bigger flights. But um, it's one, it's, we alternate. Uh, so okay. it's, you take, so one person takes off and lands. It, we don't split, we don't split that due duty. It's the same person okay. that takes off lands, but then every other okay. flight is a different person that the, the other per, person flies. Okay, no, well, that's cool. You know, and I travel so much, but I've never, I never talked to him. I, I when they thank me for yeah. flying, I say hi, but I never really sat down with a pilot. Like, dude, what you doing in there? Y'all got Netflix or, <laughs> or you chill it? I'm like, what's going on in here? Every now and then they come yeah, out. Y'all, y'all the sleeping up in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah y'all, y'all, y'all sleeping y'all in the up and stuff. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so, so you've been flying for a while. Um, you, you reached the point now where, if I understand correctly, you, that you are an, actually an instructor pilot yeah. for the Boeing 737. So two questions. If I recall correctly, the 737, that's mm-hmm. the big boy, right? That's the, is that the one that can fly overseas? Yeah, so that one, usually it's, uh, you probably, West, WestJet has them, and I think Air Canada has them, but we fly, the, West, the 737 goes like, Central America, South America, North America, um, then and the Carib- Caribbean. That one doesn't go across to like Europe and all, all that stuff. The, the That's seven forty-seven. No, the, the so the seven forty-seven flies cargo. So there is like the there is oh. one called the seven seven seven. There's a seven eighty-seven. Those are the big, big, big ones. Those carry like three uh. three hundred three hundred folks. Those are ones that go from like New Jersey to like Mumbai, India, or or uh. Cape, Cape Town. Uh, mine okay. goes the range on mine is about eight hours um so okay. where, wherever we can go to eight hours now some other carriers around the world they fly those things like very very far the united states has a bit bit more uh restrictions on what certain planes can can do um okay sort of stuff but 
Yeah, the the one that you probably have flown on it from Canada to the United States, it's most likely a, a Boeing uh, 737. Uh, so with the instructor okay. job, you just kind of teach. I just, I'm now a, te a teacher for new incoming uh -huh. pilots on that plane. So I teach them how to fly and operate that plane for the standards okay. uh, of my airline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't, you don't actually fly the plane to different destinations. You're solely, you're solely a pilot. Oh, no, no. So yeah, I still fly. I just don't okay. fly as much as like a regular. So there's like, we, gotcha. we jokingly say a regular pilot, but so that they're, they're, they're pilots that just fly the plane. So they fly, go to the hotel when they're done, they go home. Uh, my job okay. is I'm, I'm in a training facility where there are these uh, multi-million dollar system simulators that replicate the actual plane. So they do ah. exactly the same things as the plane. It's actually quite fascinating, the technology, but it's just an expensive. But my job is to do yeah. that, but I still have a requirement to be out there and fly passengers um, to, to okay. ensure that I am still op operating at the same standard as the guys that are flying every single day, guys and girls that are flying every single, single day. Yeah. So it seemed that during COVID, there was a, a significant uptick in people that wanted to become pilots. Um, truth be told, I actually looked into it because I was like, that, that'd be kind of cool. Kind of, you know, my father-in-law, you know, if he, he did it, you know, kind of had a tangible role model. I could probably do it too. Is that, is that true? Did you, have you noticed a significant increase in people coming into the industry wanting to be pilots? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think because of social media, um, that was the mm -hmm. biggest push. Cause remember 20, 2020, that's all we had. Right. And then pilots were still pilots and flight attendants were considered essential em employees. So people yeah. were still posting their lives and what they were doing. And everyone was like, whoa, that's what they do. That's actually kind of cool. Right. Yeah. Um, so there was an uptick in terms of the the desire to be pilots, because I think uh, I want to want to say 2021. I might be wrong. I don't want to be wrong. But the top two jobs in the top five were pilots and flight attendants. Flight oh, wow. was the number two search job in the United States uh, wow. for like a couple for a couple of years, and pilots was like number four, all right. And then the mm. others were like con content creators and and, and all that. Mm. It was became desirable because it was it's attractive to 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 the eye, right? But the problem okay. is, human humans we are only fascinated with the beginning and the end, right? Yeah, you just want to see you just want to want to see that you've made it. But we're not concerned right. about the journey, right? And that's right. what catches a lot of folks, right? We have, we mm. want easy life. We want simple, simple life because this job is amazing. I, I would never change it for anything else. But mm. the journey to get here is really not that easy. And there are still mm. some internal systemic things that are in place that still kind of hold us a little bit back, right? Because even though you're seeing more smile, like you travel and you said you see more of us, in the grand scheme of things, it is still a fraction, like a, 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 a minuscule fraction of mm -hmm. the total number, all right? Mm -hmm. It's less than maybe 7% of, of us, both male and female. And the female is about maybe 2% of the entire industry in the world that is like wow. us, right? Wow. So and yeah. that, it's just the journey. journey. I, I will share a quick story. The, the reason why we... Yeah. The reason why more of us are in aviation. There was a gentleman that, that applied for an air, airline back in the day. I can't remember the year, right? So he, he applied, he had the qualifications and he applied, I think his name is Marlon Green, right? He, he, he applied for it, got the mm -hmm. job, right? When he finally showed up to do the job, they're like, hold on a set. He didn't think it was you, uh, slots are full, right? So then he was like, okay, no, no problem. He reapplied and checked the other box. All right, they gave him the job. All right, mm. so then he had two papers. One was this. Yeah. Right? yeah the yeah. other was yeah, yeah. the other was right, this. Right. Right. One saying yes, one saying no, with the exact same qualification, same name, and everything. So he took them to mm. court and he won. So then mm. it became an our thing of all the other places were like, oh, whoa, whoa, they they're on to us. All right. So then it became more of a okay. Let's start to hire, hire more, more and more folks. But even while they got into hiring the training, back then it was a little bit different. It's not as, you know, things are a bit more transparent now. So mm. it was a lot more, you know, make it harder for us to succeed mm. and make it a little bit easier for the others.
times are changing sure. now where because now this generation is they're not standing for that type of that type of stuff. This generation is gonna pull out their phone in a heartbeat, right? So that's right. <laughs> Record everything. <laughs> yeah. So so things things are change things are change changing. It's slowly and I think there's gonna be a time where it's not gonna be as a surprise anymore. Mm. But that we're still that is still a ways, ways away because you have to not get it's an ideology, right? You can't get rid of ideology unless you remove all the folks that have that ideology. So mm, it's gonna take right. time for this to for us to be equal and fair. But uh it, it is great. I, I endorse everyone to do it because now there are people that are like us that are in places to help. So now it's mm -hmm. a great time. If it's that you want to be a pilot, it's a great time. Both both races because now there mm -hmm. is a demand for it, right? Mm -hmm. But people just have to remember that it's not easy because not because I see you having a, pod, a podcast, that means that I can just go do it, right? Because I'm sure there are logistical things or uh, journeys that you have to go through to get to this point. It looks cool. Yeah. But people have to remember, man. It's a process. It's a process. It's and a process. I think the, yeah. the generations have changed where there's a sense of the work ethic has changed. And the mm. mentality of entitlement is also like at an all time high. So people expect things versus having to put a little bit of work in, you know? Mm -hmm. so, tell me this. I, 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 when you were talking about the flight simulator, I think it was mm -hmm. uh, where they simulate things. From your experience being inside of the industry and us looking at Jeff Bezos and, and Elon going up to space, flying up there, coming back down, if you were to just Look from where you, what you know on the inside today out to 50, 60, 80 years. Are we on Mars? Are we on, uh, are we traveling <laughs> in space? Or just from your experience, is the technology going to be there like for our great grandkids to go to Mars? Or is that like five generations away? Just because you're an insider, you actually know the equipment, you know the capability, you understand the science and the physics of flight. Is that just Hype, hype this going to Mars? Give us the inside scoop, Jerome. So, What's yeah, the inside scoop? Is, is Elon <laughs> full of it? <laughs> <laughs> the, astro, the, 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 the space world, man, they're in a whole other, whole other world, man. I honestly don't even know much, much about that. But if it's happening now, that means in 30 years, it's probably going to be more accessible because in right now it's only billionaires and millionaires that could afford that, right? So, because I think yeah. I read an article where they're, they're like they're trying to get get the flights down to like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per per person, right? So mm -hmm. that's more af affordable, right? But with inflation, the way inflation the way inflation is going now, you know that's what right. thousand might might be like a million, right? But um, yeah. now yeah. in terms of technology, man, technology in aviation, it's it's remarkable because I remember when I went started in college 14 years ago, the drone world wasn't even a thing really. The drones were military only, like that was only like a mm -hmm. military thing. And even they, it was still in the initial phases of development. Right now, I can go buy a drone for a hundred dollars. Right, that technology has skyrocketed immensely. And then of course, there's always that push of uh, more automation in aviation because mm -hmm. you know they believe that automation makes us safer, and it has Im improved our our safety margins dramatically because that's why there were more in incidents back in in the day. These guys and girls, well, guys and maybe one or two girls, mm -hmm. right? But <laughs> it it was they were better pilots because they didn't have all this automation. So the the saying is they were better stick and rudder. They were better hand flying, right? but they weren't mm -hmm. as safe. We are safer, come way safer, but we're not as sharp, right? So the mm. FAA and all these other aviation facilities around the world around the world, are now pushing for pilots to fly the airplane, actually physically control the airplane more because mm. the automation makes us lazy. It's the same with our phones, right? We don't have to mm -hmm. go anywhere for anything at all. We can literally sit there on our phones. It's the same thing with aviation. They have put so many things in making us safe. It's an unintended consequence that yeah. now the skills have decreased just just a bit. Not not that we're not safe. It's just that pilots aren't as as uh, physically capable as they once were because of, of all this aviation. So now with the FAA seeing all these little minor mistakes and things here and there, they are now putting in training into place for us to get back to that level of extra super, super sharp. 
Mm-hmm. You know, as, as you share that, Jerome, what comes to mind is right now I'm teaching my son how to drive. Mm-hmm. And so on my car, I don't have any bells and whistles. I don't have any blind spot warning. I don't have any brake assist. I don't have any lane departure warning. He has to drive. You got to drive the car. You got to drive the car. <laughs> you got to drive. You got to drive the yeah. car. You got to look and see if there's a car next to you. You got to keep the car on the road. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You actually, you, actually have to, you actually have to look, right? And in, in comparison, my wife's car has all the bells and whistles. And so I was telling him, it's similar to what you were saying just now yeah. is that it's great that you're learning how to drive on my car because you're going to be a great driver on any car you drive. Yep. You won't be limited to, if because if you drive a car with all the bells and whistles, the blind spot warning, the lane departure, and you get into a car that doesn't have that, you know, you're going to be t- dependent on it. Yeah. It's, it's like, what's going on? You know, I didn't. Yeah. And so I, I see, I see the value in what you're saying in terms of pilots coming up and being trained on all this technology. And then let's say that goes out and now they actually have to fly the plane because the electronics went out and you actually have to fly the plane. And like, whoa, I didn't learn this in school. I don't know. How, what, what's a stick? What's a rudder? Yeah. You know, and so I, I see the value of learning that. Before we transition to the final four, I, I think I would be remiss in my interview skills if I didn't ask you to tell us more about your foundation. We were once them. Where did that name come from? And then tell us about the foundation. So it, it was, it started as uh, I wasn't one of the, the uh, foundation members. I just joined in right after they started this thing. But it was a group of us, uh, three, three Af- Af- African uh, pilots that wanted to give back because they always give back to the United States. And they're like, wait, wait a minute. We're not from the United States. Why don't we go back to our countries and try to do what we do, what we did. And then it just started as the four, four of us and maybe five or six of us. Whoever had availability, we just go to different countries around the world. Right? So we went to Senegal was like one of the first, first ones, uh, uh-huh. Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, just going, just strict, strictly off of just going to show kids, hey, you know, we were literally just like you. And that's where the, the name mm. we were once them. We, we were no different, absolutely no different. So we're trying to show them, hey, you can do it too. You don't have to be a pilot, but you can be whatever it is that you want to be because it's it's possible. And then it, mm. it grew traction. So by the, I think they went to Ghana was like the big, big one where they actually had a videographer, like a videographer and a photographer. And he was able to capture that moment. And that's when it kind of grew. And then the, mm. the airline wrote an article about it. And the person that was writing the article, was like, this sounds like we were once them. All right. And that's where the name started. So then we ended up founding a foundation because it, it was growing. It was mm-hmm. getting too big to just be like a, arbitrary hey let's let's <laughs> let's just go go here so they founded the, the actual found foundation and uh, we just got back uh from in september to rwanda we just came 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 back from wow. uh, rwanda Af- africa and i mean if you ever have the yeah. chance to go man that's a they are in so you see like how we're in the tw- 21st century there in like the 23rd man they their philosophy on life is completely different to ours because of what they've been been through but Back to the, yeah, it's the, yeah, yeah. the the whole goal of the foundation is just to more more motivate young people, young children like us that didn't have much. That hey man, you know, regardless of your circumstance, you can make it. You can do whatever. It's just not going to be easy, but you can do it if you truly, truly want to get this done. And that's what it's about. It's just going back, and we're not going to change a hundred hundred lives, right? We're only trying to get one, yeah. one, one or two. And even if it's one just one, time. that we have done our jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For those listening and, and viewing this, um, where can those that are interested to learn more about the foundation? Do you have a website? Do you have yeah. an Instagram page? Can you share yeah. that with our listeners? Yeah. So it's uh, the, the web page is uh, wewot, so W-E-W-O-T dot org. And then this, it's the same for the in, in, Instagram hand and handle we watch. Okay. So we were once them. Um, okay. And if, if you just Google, Google search, we were once them, it's, it's going to show up. Where it, it shows up. everything that we've done, what, what we're doing, where the donations go, uh, where the money, money goes, the kids and, and that sort of stuff. Great. All right. So the transition question before we get to the uh, final four, yeah. what's one thing that most people don't know about you that you wish they knew man jesus 
<laughs> um, Whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say uh, my passion for music. I think a lot oh. of folks don't know. As I said, in um, in high, high school, I was given a choice. You know, either I pre- pre- pursue this music path or I go to the aviation path. So um, I do have an underlying desire to get back. To that at some some point, so I wish people knew. Um, but I do have another, another passion, uh, which is um, music. And uh, when we go out, I would rather go to a lounge with live music than a club with DJ sets. Okay, wow. great. That great, is so great. cool because uh, we had a lady on who was a psych, uh, neuro, environmental physicist or something, and we had her on the pod, and she said. You guys are the first one to have me on your podcast for my science and my mental capabilities, whereas everyone else has me for my jazz skills. And then she's a world-renowned jazz yeah, person. Yeah. I'm like, you got yeah, jazz she skills? Sings. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. sings oh, all over the, the world. I'm like, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that was you. So are you a singer, a producer, or do you play an instrument? Or Yeah, uh, yeah the parents, again, man, they back in the day, they forced me to go to music lessons, man. So um I play the piano. I used to play play in church. I grew up in in the church, so I play the or, or, or organ in church, and then I have a passion for the bass. So I play okay, wow. play for the bass in church as well. Yeah, nice. uh, awesome. Well, I can't wait to listen to your first uh, TikTok video yeah. or your <laughs> yeah. musical video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So for the final four, tell me, you're having dinner anywhere mm-hmm. where you want to have it on the planet. You flew to the place. Who do you want to have dinner with, alive or dead, and why? Three people, you're at the table, and three others. Or we had a lady on. She's like, I don't want to eat with anyone. I just want to eat by myself. So she's like, All right. So, <laughs> yes. so, nobody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> so, um, who would you want? I would want to eat with my grandfather. He's mm-hmm. no longer here. Um, but uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I would love to have one more meal with him so he can see. The work that he put in uh, in the beginning, um, see what mm. that is, because he missed out on, you know, and I, yeah. So that's one. Um, I, I'll probably have a celebrity, uh, my, my, my mom. Um, I'll mm-hmm. eat, eat, eat my mom. And then uh, I'll probably want to have a celeb- celebrity there. Uh, probably Rihanna, because I think she's come from the Caribbean. Ah. And uh, just kind of seeing her journey, because I, you know, I listened to her music growing growing up so i just want to like you know just chit chit chat with her how did you make it you know how, what yeah. were some of your like uh challenges yeah so those okay. will probably be the three people thank you what's been your greatest success my greatest success would be taking those pilots back to trinidad and tobago uh particularly tobago to show people that i made it out so you can make it out too. That was probably one of the high highlights of my career was uh, taking those kids back, uh, take taking the pilots back, and then giving young children home an opportunity to go fly a plane. Uh, so that was this happened earlier this year in March where I was able to take take them back home, uh, take some pilots, some flight attendants, some mechanics, and all that stuff. We talked to multiple, multiple kids around schools, but then the highlight was these kids actually getting to go fly a plane. I'm, I'm, I mean, wow. around around the world, there's like a very popular area there where kids have never seen this thing from above. You, you, you know, they've never yeah. seen it. No, no, no one really has. So they were able to actually see that area from above, and they're like, "Wow, this is this is like my island. It's crazy." And then, uh, so awesome. that was the biggest high high highlight, I would say. Okay. Awesome. So here's one. What's your superpower? The Hulk is strong. Superman flies. Uh, the Flash is fast. What is uniquely Jerome? That's no other person on the planet. That's your superpower. Uh, I, it's not unique to me, uh, but uh, I, I, I would say my love for my family, uh, mm. and my dedication to my family is my superpower because without them, I most likely probably wouldn't be where I am for today. So um, my dedication and love for my family, I, I would say, is my superpower. That actually keeps me going um, because I, I have yeah. to be successful and, and, and keep going to reward their 
trials and tribulations that they went through to get me to the, this point. It's not like a bur burden, but it's something that it's, it's a load that I carry because I know I have to do this in order to bring other folks up as well. You know, you know, as you say that, Jerome, from the beginning oh. of this conversation, I've seen a common thread being your connection with your family, your community, and those that look like you, right? So it, 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 it's clear that that's, that's kind of who you are to your core. So I, I love that you said that. Last question. If you were to write a autobiography, what would the title be? It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. There you go. I like that. I love it. I like that. I love it. Well, well, Jerome, man, I was telling Dre, I, every time, every week I travel, I fly somewhere. Tomorrow I got to go to Chicago. And, nice. and I'm just so excited to speak to you. As I feel like I, I, I interact with pilots weekly. I walk past them. I can just see them. I, they say hi. I say thank you. And, and I, we got a silent contract. Like the contract yes. is, I, I pray, it's like, <laughs> I don't care about yeah. all the turbulence. I just want you to land softly. Yeah. So when, yeah. I, when I get to walk off the plane, I'm like, that's my boy right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fulfilled the contract. No, so no, no. We're, we're no, happy about it, but it is. You are signing the contract <laughs> with us. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, I, when I walk with him, I'm like, I'm hoping he's in a good mind space. I hope yes. nobody pissed him off. I'm hoping he's happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we land, I'm like, I'm glad he was happy. So oh, yeah. I, I, I just want to thank you <laughs> for what you do. <laughs> what you do is is appreciated. I appreciate you more than most because I'm there weekly and, and thanks. And I'm just so honored and excited just to meet a pilot, a cap, a, 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 a pilot. I've never met one. And in all these years, I've been flying for 35 years. I've yet to meet them because I see them. I say hi, but I've never shook their hand, never talked to them. And to speak 30, 40 minutes with a pilot. Dude, it just checked off my bucket list. So thank you. No, I, I appreciate it. It, it. it goes a long way when when folks appreciate what we do, you know, because we mm -hmm. tell everybody else thanks, man. But the guy and girl that's up up there flying you at six hundred miles an hour, you know, doing a, a, a task that not many people in in the world can do. Can do. It's not that many of us in the in the in the world in the grand scheme scheme of things. And you don't say yeah, thanks, yeah. you know. I look forward to it. I I do appreciate when folks recognize that. Hey. You know what he just did, or he or she just did, is actually pretty cool, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, it's nice when you guys, even if it's just like like a little nod or whatever it is. It's it's it's, it's generally appreciated. Well, thank you. Great. Yeah, man. I appreciate you taking the time on your Saturday to uh, to be with us. And uh, yeah, I think it was a great, hopefully a great experience for our listeners to learn more about what happens behind those locked doors up in the air. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks yeah, for no, your time. No, thank, thank, thank you, gentlemen, for having me, man. I mean, this has been long, long, long time in the coming and long time in the making. But sincerely, thanks for make, making the ambiance just so relaxing. It's like we're chopping it up, you know. It's like we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're just it wasn't too formal. It was just nice and yeah. calm, wherever you can have a conversation an open honest conversation and i genuinely appreciate it for doing this on your saturdays taking your saturdays that you can be doing yeah. many other things to come talk to us and whoever else that you have for the rest of the month awesome awesome